I wake up and I hear this and it just sounded like whoa, 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 whoa. And then it started whooping like whoo, whoo. Um, well, my name's Patrick Perry. I used to live around the St. Louis area. Um, and I mean, years ago, I of course, like most people my age, saw the In Search Of and, and the Patty video. And it really intrigued me when I was a child. But as I was growing up, I just, I always thought that, you know, they didn't exist around here. So I never really thought about it. And then I had an experience here in Missouri towards St. Louis. And that just took my entire mind and wrapped it around it. So uh, after that, I was basically obsessed with finding out what I heard that night. But started yeah. when I was born. So tell me about that first experience you had. Well, <clears throat> the first experience I had, I was, uh, I was hunting on my sister's land. Um, I wasn't, really supposed to be out at night but you know at that point in time i just got laid off she just lost her job i was deer hunting on on her property because i had time off and i was like what else am i going to do <laughs> till till i you know because i was a union carpenter and, and jobs come and go and uh so i had some time off and i was spending a lot of time out in her woods and i knew that they didn't have a lot of money for food at the time so you know, I was like, hey, I'd been hunting for about two weeks, and I was seeing deer everywhere, every night, all over the place. And I was watching them, and I was just, at that point, it was still early in the season, so I was kind of waiting for a buck more than a deer, or just a doe. But, you know, I it was early, so I gave it like a week or two. Then all the deer just seemed to disappear. And I was talking to her, and I said, well, they might be in an early rut or something like that. I'm like, and, and maybe the, the bucks are chasing the does around at night and, and they're just not coming out like they used to to feed in the fields. So I was like, do you mind if I sit in my blind overnight? And my blind was tucked into a, not really too far from her house, maybe about a quarter of a mile away, it was tucked in a little corner of a field. And she was like, no, that's fine. She's like, I don't have a problem with that. And it was bow season. I had my, my bow. And so I, I went and I did an afternoon hunt. And I sat in my blind, didn't hear anything, didn't see anything. And I eventually fell asleep. I was like, well, you know, we'll be, I'm just going to stay in this blind overnight. And uh, just going to see what I see and go from there and i ended up falling asleep i don't know eight nine o'clock that night and i just had a little a little fold out chair in the uh in the blind and just a little tiny opening just enough for me to see my field and, and enough for me to shoot shoot my arrow out and that was the only opening i had <clears throat> and like i said i fell asleep and I still remember looking at my, my phone when I, I got woke up. And it was 2 o'clock in the morning. And sounded like a silverback gorilla. It, I, and I know I've said that before, but that's exactly what my first thought was when I got awoke. Because I'm sitting in the chair and I hear this. And I mean, I was, I was sound asleep. I was dreaming. I remember I had a little drool going down my cheek. And... I'm sitting in the my chair. I wake up and I hear this, and it just sounded like, whoa, 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 like a really angry ape, and it sounded like it was about ten yards behind my blind. You know, I don't know that for a fact, but it sounded like it was dang close. And that's when I first woke up, and I'm like, I sit up in my chair, and I'm listening to it, and I don't know how long it went on making that sound because when you're scared and, and, and wondering what you're hearing, because I've hunted in these woods all my life, ever since I was about eight years old. 
So I think I'd heard everything and seen everything that's wandering around in these woods, but I'd never heard that before. And it went on making the gorilla sounds for a while. I could hear it breaking branches, kicking, kicking up leaves and just making a ruckus. And then it kind of quieted down a little bit and then it was moving around my blind. I could hear it and it ended up wandering around the corner over to the edge of the, the, uh, the forest. Because like I said, the, where I was at was kind of like corner of a field. So there was a wood line going this way and a wood line going that way. And I was sitting in the corner and I could tell it circled around and it was in front of me now. And then it started whooping like, whoo, whoo. I mean, really loud. I mean, so loud. I could in, in the, even the, the gorilla sounds, the grunts, the growls, I feel it. I mean, it was so loud. I could feel it inside my body. And when it started making, and, and when it started making the howling sounds, I mean, it didn't sound exactly like a howler monkey, but I couldn't place it in a box. So I was like, is that a howler monkey? I'm like, did, did a bunch of creatures escape from the freaking zoo or a roadside zoo or something? I was like, I was really confused. And I'm sitting up and I hear it. And then I, I, it, it starts making its way along the wood line again. Then it started to do this and I've heard it on the Sierra sounds actually all these sounds I've heard on the Sierra sounds but it started to make this snarling growl and almost like it was trying to say something but I couldn't make it out and it and at that point I thought it was a demon I, I, I was like there's a demon in these web <laughs> because I couldn't imagine the range of sounds that I was hearing and nothing was registering in my brain for anything I'd ever heard before out here. And then when I heard it make that snarling, like it was trying to speak and I was, and it was, and that was very loud too, but it didn't sound happy. <laughs> it didn't sound happy at all. I, I took my crossbow and I only had one arrow with me and I, clutched it to my chest and I remember this like it was yesterday and I just started praying I started saying Hail Mary I was like I do not want to see what is making these sounds because I at that point I'd had made a choice I'd have to make a choice of either using that one arrow <laughs> or just you know leaving it be and at that point I was just wanting to hide I didn't even want it to know I was there because I was afraid it was going to take me out. If, but in hindsight, it knew I was there. It knew I was there because it kept circling my blind. It wasn't like it was just going to random positions. It was circling my blind. It would be in front for a little bit behind in front <clears throat> and I could hear it moving. And the whole time, I'm just, I'm scared to death. I'm just, like, I'm going to die out here. I'm like, these sounds are so loud. Why is nobody waking up? Because like I said, I wasn't that far from houses, maybe a quarter of a mile. Granted, I was, you know, maybe a mile or two off the river and everything was wooded up to there. But still, it came up that far. I'm sure people got to be hearing this. And, and, but nothing. <laughs> it's, it's, it, like I said, I'm in there praying for my life, hoping somebody's going to come rescue me and uh, nothing. And there was no way I was getting out of that blind. And everybody's like, well, why didn't you record the sounds or why didn't you look out your, your blind and see what was doing it? It's like, I didn't want to see what was doing it. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of a primal fear. And and. The last thing I wanted to do, even though it probably knew where I was, was give up my location by making sound or movement. And as I prayed, it, it, it eventually, it wandered off. It eventually wandered off. And it wandered, you know, I, I could hear it moving through the woods. And, and, and I don't know if it was adrenaline or, or what, but I, I eventually fell back to sleep. And it was about two hours later. <clears throat> I was awakened. I could hear the 
the sounds again, but they're way in the distance. They're down towards the river. I hear the whoa, whoa. and that woke. It was still so loud that it woke me up. And I woke up. I looked at my phone. I was like, "It's four o'clock." I'm like, "Oh, come on, daylight!" <laughs> but I felt a little better because it was further away, and I'm like, "Maybe I'm okay." And then he did that for a little while, and I. When it stopped, I eventually I fell back to sleep, and my alarm went off the next morning for my morning hunt. And when it did, I still remember this also like yesterday. I grabbed my phone, and I was so scared. I couldn't, my mind just wasn't working right because I was so scared. So I couldn't figure out how exactly to shut off my alarm quick enough so i just ripped the battery out of it to shut my because i'm like it's going to hear this it's going to come back it's going to get me and i i was terrified and I, I ripped my my battery out of the phone and then i sat there for about another 45 minutes to an hour waiting for the sun to come up as soon as the sun come up i grabbed my stuff and i got out of there and it wasn't uh, the the next day I went back and I tried to look around for footprints or evidence of anything what was making that sound but I really couldn't find anything um because the ground's not really good for anything like that there it's just full of rocks and it's so hard so and and once I got back to my sister's house I started telling her about the sounds I heard and she said oh my she's like PJ well, that's what my family calls me, PJ. She's like, I've heard those same sounds behind behind my house. And when she heard them, it was back in the, I don't know, mid to late 70s. And, uh, but she said she'd heard the exact same sounds. And the night she heard them, the next day they went out and they found hair on, on the barbed wire fence behind the house. It was like, she said it was like four to four to six or six to eight inches long. I forget exactly what she told me, but she said it was like reddish brown and it was on the fence and they don't have horses or cattle or anything in there. There's nothing in there that would, and she said it was on the top strand too of the bob wire. So whatever put it there had to be more than four foot tall, I would think. So if a, Bigfoot did step over that fence. There's a real good chance he'd have lost some hair on it. But back then, they didn't, you know, Bigfoot wasn't a thing. She did. She just kind of like wrote it off and don't worry about it. And But when I told her what happened to me, she it, it brought it all flooding back. She's like, I've heard, I've heard it. She actually, it's not a great recording. She actually recorded what sounds like an Ohio howl out of her house one night. Um, I've heard it. And. It's just, it's not very good audio quality, but I, I, I could hear the screen that, that she, she played for me and it instantly like brought that fear back because I know, well, I know now these things are out there. When it first happened, I didn't really know what was doing it. I kind of went on a bit of an investigation when she told me about that, that got my wheels turning in my head about about hearing it behind her house so then the wheels in my head start turning and so I, I i go online and then that's where i found the sierra sounds and when i heard them i'm like it i started crying because i was like that's it was like a little bit of validation i was like that's what i heard that's what i heard that night i know that's what i heard and so the place where you saw this, this this was actually in Missouri. The the location where you saw where you had that experience, that sound experience in the in the hunting blind, that was in Missouri. Correct. Uh, it was in Saint Clair, Missouri, and that's about an hour west of Saint Louis, and it's it's located right on the Merrimack River, and there was actually a, a local farmer out there which I was going to share some of these pics of the prints, but I'm not sure if I have permission to, because I don't know the guy. So a friend of mine who knows the guy and, and his farm is about five miles away from, from 
where I had my experience and uh, he he cast a bunch of prints on his property and that has actually seen them but um, yeah it was it was right right outside St. Louis I mean you you think being that close to a big city there wouldn't be anything but once you get about an hour west of there turns to a lot of woods a lot of woods a lot of water so um so um when you went back out after at the next day and, and started looking for some evidence of things did you find anything no it, you could tell there was disturbance behind the blind that's about the only thing i could really tell um one interesting fact though there's a cave that i used to like to go down to and it's right on the river it's not far from where I, my hunting blind was i actually went down to that cave that day just messing around wanted to take a walk go by the water go by the cave because i like sitting out front of it and uh so and, and i don't know if that really has anything to do with it but i went and did that before i went hunting that evening and then on another day when i was walking out the, that way i saw something really strange it was a squirrel laying in the middle of a path that I always take, and it looked like it had been peeled. Like somebody grabbed the tail and ripped the skin down all the way to the head. The head, the the skin was wrapped over the head, like somebody just peeled it like a banana, and all the meat was eaten off the bones. The tail was still there, had hair on it. Skin was all still there, but it was wrapped around the head, and that was kind of odd. And I've had a couple other instances down there at the cave where I've, I've, I, I, I'm positive it was Bigfoot because there was a, a girl I was dating at the time when this first incident happened, and she didn't believe me. She thought I was making it up, this and that. I'm like, I'm not. Now, even my daughter was like, I, I went to her and I thought people weren't going to believe me. A lot of people didn't. But my daughter was like, well, you need to listen to uh, Matt's story, her, her boyfriend at the time. And he said that his dad and a buddy of his who are farmers were looking at a piece of property to, to farm that they were going to rent and farm. And it was right along the Merrimack, about a mile, a mile west of where I was. And they said they heard, because when I explained to her, I was like, I told her the sounds I heard. And I said, I'm not making it up. It really happened. And then, well, he came back with, well, my dad heard the same things when him and his buddy were looking at this property. They got scared. They got in their car. And he said the ass end of the car got lifted up. And his dad looked behind. And all he could see was a dome-shaped head hair, shoulders, and his buddy was revving the, the engine up and it eventually just dropped it and they got out of there. And so that was the, another one of the stories that kind of made me lean towards, well, maybe I did hear a Bigfoot that night. And I was out there, it was about a year later, almost a year to the day later, and I was... At the cave, I like messing around in that cave. <laughs> and it was getting about dusk. And I was with my ex, and we heard straight up Ohio howls. There was one to the south, one to the east, and like two to the west, one right after another. And they were all different. You could hear one. Whoa! And then you hear another one. It was a different pitch, further different position. And then it was like they were trying to locate each other. And she stopped. She looked at me and she goes, what was that? And I'm like, I don't know. It wasn't a coyote. And I don't think it was a human. I don't know. So we went on. And it's like a few days later, back out there. And we're sitting in front of the cave. And it's getting, sun's getting ready to go down again. And I hear the gorilla sounds from the other side of the river. The same ones I heard in my blind. Woo, woo, woo. 
and you could tell it was like it was just throwing a ruckus again but it was luckily this time it was on the other side of the river and she looked at me her eyes got as big as dinner plates and she said it does sound like a gorilla and i was like i told you <laughs> and so i motioned to her to, to be quiet not make any noise and i walked down the path a little bit <clears throat> and found me a stick and i know we don't know what any of this means but at that point in time i was like i don't really want this thing coming across so i'm, I'm going to try to do something to distract it or get it away from here so i went down and i, I smacked this tree as hard as i could <clears throat> with a with a log and i mean it echoed through the whole valley uh and she said and i wasn't by her side when when i did this so when i came back she said when you did that she said it sounded like a, a scared chimpanzee running up she said she could hear it running through the leaves running back up the hill she said it was going woo, 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 making like monkey noises like like it was scared running up the hill so i mean just a lot of a lot of crazy stuff going on out there yeah, and it sounds like uh, that particular area. Have you been out there recently, or was this all back in time? This was all back in 2016. I've since went back there one other time, and this is actually pretty interesting. But uh, uh, I went back there to just try and do a camp out, and, and like I said, I, I I've seen black bear i've seen all the the animals in those woods that particular day i actually did see a black bear and it scared me to death because when i first saw it it was running through the field the grass was about four foot tall and its back was at the and i'm like what the heck is it? i just saw this black mass running through and it ran right across my road i was driving through there and i was going back up to my sister's house for, for dinner before I did the rest of my camp out and I seen this and it that was a, obviously a black bear I saw it. it 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 was it was trying to get away it wanted nothing to do with me I, I so that's why another thing I don't think it was a bear or a bobcat or anything like that n that night because that bear as soon as it knew there was a human around it was out of there it took off and didn't make no sound didn't make nothing it was just like I'm gone buddy and uh so i i want to go back there again um but to, uh, <laughs> it's a little scary it's a little scary to think about because i know this is the time of year when everything was happening and i don't know if the time of year has something to do with my migratory routes or if it's just i i had a theory before that it might be like mating season and they're extra I don't know. They're they're not as scared to let themselves be seen or known. Um, but for some reason, that area October is is the hot time. So I've heard that with from others that uh, they tend to be more active um, in that fall season and in the spring as well. Yeah, I one one year out there, I was down in one of the creeks and it was spring and I, I took a picture of it I wish I knew how to cast at that point in time <clears throat> because the picture didn't do it justice and I know I saw there was two footprints I know bare footprints and they're in the mud one was about 16 inches long and the other one wasn't it was probably a little smaller than my foot but they were both barefoot and the big one, the little footprint, like, was, like, almost on top of the big one. And you could tell they were separate, but you could see five toes in each one. You could see the, the heel, the whole foot. It wasn't, I took a picture, like I said, I took a picture. It didn't do it justice. I, I put something down for scale, and it just, without, without you actually being there and looking at it, it just didn't really do anything, so I never really posted that or put it anywhere and then there was, a, there was another incident when i was a little tiny well not real tiny but 13 that's tiny compared to what i am now 
and I was walking down that path, and it was 4th of July. So that's, maybe they're there all the time, and they just don't make themselves known, but it was 4th of July. I was 13. We were down on the river doing the 4th of July celebration, and me and my little dog had a little dachshund, and we went for a walk. And we were walking down this logging road, and we got, I don't know, maybe 200 yards away from where everybody else was. And we're actually getting close to where the cave was. And she stopped, and she started growling, and the hair stood up on the back of her neck, and she's looking up into the woods. So I look up into the woods, and I don't see anything. I'm like, what is it, girl? What is it? And she's looking and looking and growling. And after about 10, 15 seconds of that, she just yelped like somebody hit her with a switch, turned around and started running back towards the other direction as fast as her little legs could take her. And so I, I did the same thing. I was, she's scared. I'm scared. So I start running with her. And when we started running, we could hear it. Well, we could hear whatever it was. I, I don't know what it was, but I could hear it paralleling us up in up in the woods i didn't look back i could hear it though i could hear it running through the leaves and <clears throat> it followed us all the way to about i don't know 20 yards away from where the woods end and where everybody else was and then we ran out and i was telling everybody about it all the adults at the time and they just all laughing at me saying it was a deer it was a deer blah 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 and i'm like i don't and at the time, as a 13-year-old, I'm like, yeah, it was probably a deer. But after everything that's happened out there, it's like, I don't think it was a deer maybe that day. <laughs> because a deer's not going to chase you. It's going to run the opposite direction. Kind of like the deal with the bear. Most wildlife don't want anything to do with humans. So, But these creatures seem to be intrigued and want to be close as long as they don't get too close and they're, they're just, uh, I don't know. They're a mystery, a real mystery. They truly are. What do you think they are? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I think they have intelligence. I hope they are just, flesh and blood but if they are just flesh and blood they have abilities that we've lost or or never had and, and they just happen to have it um it, when i first saw the patty video i thought that's oh, just an ape in the woods you know so and, and then, but then as you progress and you hear people's stories and there's there's way more to it i mean there's people and I, i'm not trying to get woo but there's people say they can jump in and out of portals, which honestly, I don't know that I believe that, but it would make a lot of, a lot of answers a lot easier <laughs> for what they do. And in that actually, and not in, uh, I've actually seen an orb out there too, which I almost sometimes feel weird talking about because at the time I thought it was a drone and it was nighttime about midnight and I see, and I'm I'm out wandering around in the woods, and I see a light above the tree. It's right at the top of the tree lines, about the size of a baseball. Not making any noise, not really putting off any light, but it's there. And I thought it was a drone, and and I watched it for a while, and then I'm like, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> so I start walking through the woods, and this thing followed me all the way back to my car, and before it disappeared and, and i mean maybe it was a drone but i don't know why anybody'd be flying a drone at night i'm not really gonna see much unless it's a thermal drone which i don't think they even had back then back in 2016 17 whatever it was so is that the only drone you've seen out there what's that now I mean, is that the only orb you've seen out there yeah that is the only orb i've seen out there that that one time um and because I don't, and like I said, I, I don't know what it was, but it was just kind of odd because it did follow me. 
it followed me through the woods. And every time I'd go out to that area in the woods, I kind of always had a feeling sometimes when, when I knew they were watching me or I knew they were there. And one, one day I went out there and it was like I could almost, I, I know, and it sounds woo and weird, but I just had feelings. And like one day I went out there and I'm like, well, they're not around today. And uh, because after my experience and I started figuring out what I think and I'm at now, I'm per pretty positive. That's what I encountered. I started going out there and trying to get a little more, but not, 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 with, you know, but safely. So I'd go out there and I'd kind of look around and I'd come, you know, I wouldn't go too far, too deep, too late. And so that particular day, I come back to my sister's property or to her house. And uh, she tells me that she heard growling just inside the woods. They got a little pond that they feed ducks at and geese and the deer. And she said she went out to go put the feed in that night. She said she could hear really, really heavy breathing from like inside the wood line. She said she got scared. She dropped, dropped the corn or whatever she was feeding them and just went straight back in the house. And I was out there that day. And when I came back, she told me that I'm like, that's kind of weird because when I was out at my spot today, I kind of had a feeling nobody was around. And it's kind of weird how she, she got a feeling like something was behind her house that, that day again. So and I think they got a lot of human in them too. Um, I don't know that it's like actual human, but I, I mean like emotions, feelings, thought, I think they're intelligent. Um, not sure about the, why we don't find bodies and bones, but then again, that's where a lot of these other theories come out. You know, maybe they do go to a different dimension. Maybe, maybe they do bury their dead. And I brought that question up on a podcast or not a podcast, but a, a, a thread on one of the Facebook things one day asking about people thinking that they buried their dead. And one guy had a good comment. He's like, they buried the dead. He's like, the bones would last longer than you think we'd end up finding them. So that kind of clicked with him. I'm like, yeah, that does make sense if they, but unless they bury them in places, we're just not ever going to go dig, which I, it makes me wonder because they, I don't know how to pronounce it, but a while back they discovered, and it looked like a little chimpanzee when they did the reconstruction of it. Nadali, I think, is called. I might be mispronouncing it, but they they found a cave and they were finding all these bodies that looked like they'd been buried down in the bottom of it. And this was, I think, I think they said a hundred. 125,000 years earlier than they thought humans were actually, and these weren't humans, but before humans really started burying their dead. So if these things do it, and if they do it like that to where they bury it so deep, you ain't ever going to find it. Maybe Bigfoot do that too. I mean, there's got to be a reason we don't find more evidence unless you go conspiracy, which a lot of people do that too. And I'm be honest. I think the government knows about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and whenever they get an opportunity to like snag up a body, I think they do. I may be totally off base, but I, the, there's just too much evidence, too many sightings for, for nothing to be going on. Well, certainly a lot of people have experiences. There's no doubt about that. Um, out there in that, that area that you've had so much um, experience with and kind of know the area so you, because you've hunted it so much, are, did you ever find any structures or tree breaks or anything like that? Later, I did because, like I said, after I had the experience, I didn't really know about the tree structures and breaks. Um until like I really started investigating it. Uh, and so on, on a few of my hikes out there and I, I don't, and, and you know, I, I, I take pictures of them, send them to my sister, but yeah, I, I find what look like little teepees out in the wood and they'd be way up on a hill. Look overlooking 
like the main trail and sometimes i find like the broken branches but this was like later this is way after my experience and when i started realizing there's something out here and i started looking more i started listening more like i don't know i'd i'd, I'd hear sound like little whoops sometimes when i'd go to my my truck and i'd hear little whoop and i'd be like whoop but nothing as scary as what i had the the, the first time it was always kind of like after that initial experience it wasn't as aggressive except for the time across the river again so i don't know maybe I, there has to be different individuals and then but the 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 structures i saw they, they didn't really look big enough for you know like a sasquatch to be inside of so i don't know if those are and and, and i know it wasn't just floodwaters that did it because like i said they're way up on top of the hill way up on top of the hill way beyond where floodwaters could get and honestly in areas where people just really aren't going to go because they're going to stick to the main roads i i like adventuring through the woods i like going to places where people don't like to go and you know maybe that's why i got a glimpse of call and maybe maybe they were structures maybe they weren't you know i'm not an expert what uh, uh what else do you have to to tell us any any other experiences encounters or research you've done um well i there uh where I, where i live at now i'm living in forsyth and there's a stretch of woods behind the house here and some people up the road i'm not going to mention names or give addresses but they they were actually on on a show uh and the people thought they had and, and they live uh, as the crow flies probably five miles from where i'm at right now and they had pictures and 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 they actually d were on a show about the Ozark Howler, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, and i gonna be honest with you. I think the Ozark Howler is just a Bigfoot out here howling in the woods. But they had tracks, which I've seen pictures of, through the snow, through their yard, like six foot stride lengths, huge foot, like 20 inches long. Um, I think they were on my show, Bigfoot the Limits. I don't know if you've seen that one or not, but... Uh, we go into great detail of their documentation on twice they had a Bigfoot, at least the foot footing was going through their yard. Um, you should watch that one, Bigfoot the Limits. It's it's a really fabulous documentation of some activity on their property. Oh, that's cool. I didn't I didn't realize that. I will have to check it out. But yeah, they uh they live right up the road and we we met one day in a parking lot here because I got Bigfoot stickers on my truck, so I do that so people, if they want to talk or if they got a story or anything like that, they can come up and talk to me. And she did. And uh, so then we went and we went through the house a few times and he showed me all this stuff. So I've been trying to do a little bit of investigation in the woods behind my house. And I let, <laughs> which is probably stupid because after the fact, other people were like, don't. Don't ever gift or leave food behind your house. Always do it at a different area. But not my dumb butt went out there and I put a jar of peanut butter one day and I, I left the lid on it. And I come back a few days later and the lid was unscrewed, was laying right on the rock, right next to it. And most of the peanut butter was gone. And a lot of people say that might have been a raccoon. And yeah, I, it might have been. But it's just kind of strange how the lid was just laying right next to the jar when i came back which i thought that was kind of crazy and i've heard I, and i know a lot of sounds can sound like a wood knock but i've been sitting out here at night with my, with my wife and i remember one night i heard clear as day and she looked at me she's like was that a wood knock and she's not even into bigfoot and i'm like i think it was and then there's been a couple other nights where we heard cra a crazy scream from behind the house. It was just real quick. Kind of like that. 
and really loud. And it, it's just, and I'm like, I don't know. There's a lot of woods behind here and, and you just, you don't know what's creeping in them. So any small experiences out here, um, I need to get out there more. I'm getting ready to go actually this week going, uh, Shane Carpenter, they're doing the, the Ozark, uh, mountain bigfoot conference and so i'm hoping to learn a few tips i'm going on the camp out with them and i'm hoping to learn a little something so i can i can utilize it out here but i, I know they're, they're thick all through the ozarks i mean especially right here on the arkansas missouri border just so many stories so many stories i i just and you i would have never thought back in the day that there would be Bigfoot in these woods. and Exactly. Now, but they have been reported for a long time. Well, I should see you at the, the conference on Saturday. I'm going to be, I have a booth there, so I'm going to, I'm going to be there meeting everybody. And, and, uh, you know, Shane was also on my, on my show, uh, Bigfoot the Secret. So check that out too. But he's, he's doing a lot of really deep research in the Ozarks. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I love his work. I love his work. He's, he's making a difference you know, with all the being able to with the book, uh, Bigfoot cast and, and being able to tell is I, I think I heard him say that that he's noticed once they get to a certain size, they almost like get kicked out of the clan. And then then you go from bigger footprints to they disappear and then some smaller ones show up. And that mm -hmm. that whole that whole theory, man, I, I love it. And it makes sense. Exactly. So do you have anything else uh, from your area in Foresight? Um, no, that, that was, that's about it down here. I mean, there's really, I know there's something out there. I've not really been getting out there a lot, but I, I, I've been actually kind of waiting for the ticks to die down. <laughs> I've, I've been out in the woods a few times and oh my gosh, them seed ticks been tearing me up. So I want to do a little more investigating when it when it gets uh, a little better conditions. Mm -hmm.